Good morning. This is Tammy Perez here, and I just wanted to welcome you to Valley Christian this morning. I just want to say, first off, thank you uh, for letting me do the welcome this morning. Um, it's been a while, and I just wanted to say I'm grateful to be able to come to you guys today just to say hi, and I hope you guys are having a great month so far. Um, I just wanted to say that here at Valley Christian, we are imperfect people serving a perfect God, and I hope you do enjoy our service this morning. Um, just wanted to say that if you ever wanted to reach out to us, we do have two ways to get to us um, on the Valley Christian app on either Google or iPhone. And you can also go to valleychristian.org for any announcements, sermons, things like that. And uh, I also wanted to say if you ever wanted to get with a small group, just reach out to us. We have groups all over the valley and uh, they should be able to help you out if you're just in need of love, prayer, um, just somebody to get out and talk to. We're here for you as well. And I just wanted to come to you today with a verse um, out of First Chronicles eight sixteen, And that verse reads, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. And I know this past year has been crazy. Um, we've had uh, lost some loved ones. We've uh, gotten the actual virus itself. Um, we've dealt with lots of jobs and things like that. But I just want to say that, you know, God has a plan for everything and we'll make it through. Just uh, continue to have gratitude and joy and just know that as a people, as a church, we are here for you and we'll always be here for you. Just want to wish you a great day and let's go ahead and go in prayer. Dear God, I just thank you for all that you do. Um, thank you for covering us with your blood. Thank you for sacrificing your son for us, Lord. Um, we know that every day is difficult, but at the end of the day, as long as we have you first and foremost in our lives, we'll be able to make it. Lord, I just thank you for everything that you've done so far in my life. Thank you for our church. Thank you for Delano and Adian coming back from the sabbatical and just being rejuvenated and re-energized, God. And I just look forward to what the future holds. I love my church. I love you guys. And I just say all these things in your son's name. Amen. Have an awesome day, guys. All right. Good morning. I think we are the Changs. Um, this is uh, my name is Chris. This is Ashley. And uh, we just want to share a little bit about the uh, the winter teen camp that just happened this past uh, weekend. We have two teenagers, and we drove uh, to uh, Brian Head. Uh, for their winter teen camp and the theme was enhanced and so we were able to uh, not only enjoy the snow the ski the tubing but most importantly was able to enhance our relationship uh, not with only our teenagers with the other teens but um, the family as well uh, <clears throat> so the exciting part was uh, uh, we were able to play games, um, New Year's Eve, all the way to, to celebrate the New Year's together. And every morning we had devotionals and more, um, and every night we ended with a, with a, a icebreaker. That was a, a lot of fun. And so I want to thank you, the, the Meads, for um, even though they weren't able to, their teams were, but they, they weren't able to join us, but they, um, you know, they did a lot of planning and all we have to do is just go up and enjoy the the fun. So, um, yeah, I actually wanted to share a little bit. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it really just like a thing. It's enhance. It's enhance the relationship with other disciples, the teens, family, and also for our kids to connect with other kids. I do see the the power of like we really getting together, and the teenagers like especially Xavier. Yellow, they knock our door and invite our kids. Come on, hey, okay, go, let's go have fun. So that's that's really power relationship over there. So so appreciate that and and really e expect this is a, a enhance. Not only it's just a start. Not only this one trip is starting. We can build relationship and enhance the relationship with the other disciple in Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Valley Christian. We just wanted to share our experience about winter family camp this year. We enjoyed our time up in Brian Head, and we're also happy to be home. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with Alex. Alex, what was your favorite time from winter family camp? My favorite time was snowboarding with uh, all the teens and trying to not fall down all the time. My favorite part was sledding with my little brother, even though I got hurt. She learned how to not hit a pole, so that was really good. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, in yellow? My favorite time was building up relationships with the teens and really getting to know each other in a different light. I really enjoyed spending time with uh, families, getting closer together, playing a lot of card games up in our cabins, uh, eating food together. It was really a good time to really get closer to one another, to catch up with some of the teens that we hadn't seen in a while and their parents. So I really enjoyed that bonding time that we had. And for me, I really enjoyed forging new friendships and uh, reinforcing old ones. And together we said goodbye to 2020 and hello to 2021. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. So teen camp was fun, you guys, winter camp. One thing I wanted to read was when the Forsyths led the Bible discussion. Um, in Deuteronomy 6, um, verse 5, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. With this, we kind of tied it into like having the recipe or the ingredients that you need to basically lead the community, but also lead your family to make sure that what God has poured into you, you pour out into your community. And that's a great lesson because sometimes we go through our day to day and forget what type of ingredient will help a situation. So the girls want to share about Teen Camp too. So what I learned from Teen Camp was um, loving others as yourself or I think that's what yeah and what that means to me like what what that looks like for me is um being kind and being helpful and like getting giving good advice to people who are down and that really makes um some people day because you don't know what they're going through like they can be going through a very tough time and they just need someone to encourage them and um make them smile because that will just make their day like that yeah <laughs> what about you tamari did you have fun at teen camp yeah, um, I learned about being obedient and was, and and uh, obeying my parents the first time and being uh, kind and I love everybody. Well, love and you know. Good morning, family. My name is Alex Zambrano, and this is my beautiful wife, Bree Zambrano. We had the chance to go to family camp uh, this past weekend with the uh, with the teens and, and the families, and we wanted to go ahead and just share our experience with that. I'm going to go ahead and let my wife, Brianna, go ahead and do that. Hi. Um, yeah, so we had a really great time um, at family teen camp. Um, we actually took two of our nieces with us, um, and one of my favorite things about going to camp was, one, being able to see some of the families that we haven't been able to connect with um, just because of social distancing and being in different places in the city, things like that. Um, but even just seeing how all the teens really built relationships together. I mean, we even saw from our nieces, um, them kind of coming out of their shells a little bit, talking to some other teens that they may not have already known. Um, and even an unplanned sleepover happened, which was really cool. Um, so I'll let Alex share kind of some of his favorite memories as well. Yeah, like, like she mentioned, we got to spend some time with families that we normally don't see, um, which was awesome. You know, we got to schedule some lunches and also some dinners as well with people that we normally probably wouldn't have um, dinner or lunches with. So we definitely plan on carrying that over as we as we come back to Las Vegas. And like we mentioned, we did have two of our nieces come, Annie and Ariana, and they did get to spend time with, uh, with Tracy Lee's daughter, T uh, Talea, which was awesome to see. You know, it was the first time that I think they've had spent time and hung out with one another and seeing that relationship kind of start from ground zero and hopefully blossom into an, you know, another relationship between them would be would be awesome. Um, and then the other thing too, you know, just having fun, being able to go sledding, tubing, and then just playing in the snow, which was awesome. And although, you know, there wasn't many other, uh, many other kids our son's age, he did have a great time as well. Um, so we do appreciate, you know, having the invite extended to us and we did have a great time. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the service. Hail Jesus, you're my King. Hail Jesus, you're my King. Your life leads me to see. Your life leads me to see. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. Want to see your kingdom come. Yours be done. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. 
glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Lamb. You'll take me to your land. You'll take me to your land. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. Let proclaim that Jesus reigns. Let proclaim that Jesus reigns. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. Glory, glory to the land. Glory, glory to the land. You'll take me into your land. You'll take me into your land. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. Hail, hail, O Lion of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. You are. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you Everything with breath, repeat the song. 
down all his children. Clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Christian family, and thank you, friends, for joining us this morning and for continuing to join us as we all bring in the new year, prayerfully a year that will be much different, not because circumstances are different, but because we're different. I just want to remind the church and all the members of Valley Christian that there will be a midweek service this Tuesday, January 12th at 7 p.m., And it will be via Zoom, and you can find the link on the VC app or the VC website, Valley Christians website, which is valleychristians with an S dot org. Before we get started, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for your blessings, your love, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you for the way that you provide for us, the way that you take care of us. And Father, we know that there are many that are hurting, many that are suffering, and we pray for them. We pray for this country. Father, as things have seemingly just gone a little crazy, a lot crazy, Father, whether it be the riots or social injustice or uh, racism or division, whatever whatever the case may be, Father, we can't look to the world for answers. And we can't look to the world for hope. Father, we must look to you. And I pray that that's exactly what we do. And we know that it's not just this country, but countries all around the world are going through trials of many kinds. Help us as your people to rejoice, not in the suffering, but in the solution, which is you. Thank you for our lives. Thank you that we can gather to worship and to sing this morning. We pray that you will be glorified. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I just want to thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to be on part two of celebrating what is true with 2020 in the rear view. You know, last last week we talked about having the correct perspective. We talked about having passion about our purpose. And we talked about being persistent in our relationship with God. You know, that was a lot of the what, but I want to talk about the why. Why should we be celebrating 2021? Why why should we be rejoicing? Well, as Christians, we have many reasons to rejoice, many reasons to celebrate the the coming of a new year. And I want to talk about three of those things. Uh, Turn with me to Romans chapter one. 
Uh, I'm just joking. Uh, that's just a little joke for the members and those who have followed us in our 18-week journey through the Book of Romans, which we are not going to be journeying uh, right now. Actually, turn with me to Numbers chapter uh, 29. And basically, I'm sorry, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. And as we turn there, I want to talk about three truths briefly, uh, introduce the three truths that we need to be rejoicing about uh, and celebrate. Number one, we serve an unchanging God. Number two, we are new creations in Christ. And number three, we expect the eternal to come. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not human that he should lie not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? You know, the awesome thing about serving God, he's not us. He's not you. He's not me. He's God. And because he is God, he is able to come through with his promises time after time after time after time. He is faithful. He protected us through 2020, and he can protect us through 2021. But not only that, many of us, we, we, we were able to thrive in 2020. And I believe that you will continue to thrive in 2021. Those of us who maybe limped through 2020, this could be your year to thrive. Why? Because we serve a God who is unchanging. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from God above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. You know, the world that we live in changes from day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour. There's something new and not always better. And with God, there's an, a consistency a consistent love, a consistent patience, a consistent, per, consistent provision and protection. You know, the awesome thing in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is there to continue to save us, to keep us, to love us, and to save us from the things that would want to plague just people in this life. We have hope because of Jesus. We have hope because God doesn't change. He doesn't switch up the rules on us. He doesn't switch up things on us to where one day what's pleasing to him now is not pleasing to him. That, that's the awesome thing about God is he lays out in his word how we are to live, how we are to please him, how we are to love him and love each other. And it hasn't changed. He's always been looking for people of faith, people that will put their faith in him, put their confidence in him. And I believe we are those people to, ju to, to do just that. Because he is unchanging, that is the why we can hold on to his unchanging hand. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. His word endures because it's true. God is bigger than what we see around us. He is more profound. He is more loving than what we can even imagine. And he's able to do immeasurably more than what we can imagine. That is why we celebrate. Not because of who's in office or who's not in office. We celebrate because who is on the throne. And that's God. Number two, we are new creations in Christ. And there are several scriptures that we're going to refer to uh, in in the first one is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The new, has, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. You see, we are getting older. 
you know, during the break, I was able to play a lot of pickleball with my children who are much younger than myself. And, you know, it's amazing because after one game, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the second game, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the third game, you're like, what's wrong with you people, right? And you're just getting older. But in Christ, we are new creations. We are renewed day by day. And we'll talk about a scripture about that. But that's the awesome thing about God. That's the awesome thing about being in Christ. We are new creations. Now, many of us became new creations a long time ago, but we are still new in Christ. Why? Because we don't know it all. We haven't done it all. We haven't seen it all. There's still new horizons to visit. There, there are still new things to experience in Christ. And the awesome thing about being a new creation is that we have a new way to live. You see, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 talks about, in view of God's mercy, to present our lives as living sacrifices to God, holy and pleasing. We have a new way that we are to live. Not the old way, but a new way of holiness, a new way of righteousness, a new way of living for God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it talks about that Jesus is the author and the pioneer of our faith, that, that we need to run this new race. But what's the old race? It's called the rat race. And to be honest, I think too many of us are still running an old race. An old race of trying to get ahead of people instead of getting closer to Christ. You know, a runner, at least I'm told and I'm using my imagination, uh, something that motivates those in races, it's, it's not the distance. It's not what's left of the race. What motivates them is the finish line and what awaits them there. See, in running this new race, the rat race is, is so focused on the temporary. But this new race is focused on Jesus. We'll talk a little bit more about that. We have a new mission. Mark chapter 1 um, talks about Jesus calling his disciples, saying, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men or make you catch people. You know, whatever our old purpose of life or mission for life was, maybe to get ahead, maybe to get rich, maybe to do this, maybe to do that, in Christ as new creations, we have a new mission, a mission of seeking and saving those who are lost, just like someone sought us out through Christ to help us to know Jesus. There's no more noble purpose or mission, I should say, than that. Changing someone's eternity. And not only do we have a new mission, but that mission is fueled by a new love. You say, what's that new love? It's loving God before anything and everyone else. Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, soul. And in other, in Mark, it says, and strength. That's such an incredible passage of scripture because it lets us know the fuel behind the new creation is a new love for God. And that second greatest commandment is to love our neighbor as ourselves. Why? Because if we truly love God, it's literally impossible to not love his creation, his, his people, the, the, the neighbors who are his image bearers. And that third love that he calls us, Jesus called his disciples, is to love each other. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, by the love that you have for each other. We are to love each other as Christ has loved us. You know, in 2021, the thing that I'd love to see as a church, us grow in, is taking care of one another. You know, 2020 has been a phenomenal year, and, and I want to commend the church for fa the family groups and the family group leaders for really taking care of each other. But I think we can do more. You say, how? Guys, COVID is 
still going to be around. Joblessness is still going to be around. The tough times are not necessarily behind us. Some of the tougher times are still ahead of us. Don't grow weary in doing good. Continue to pray. Continue to extend um, great grace and continue to extend to the needy and those who are hurting. And one, one thing is if you're in the category of need, please reach out. Please don't wait. We want to help, but we can only help if we know. And so, you know, it's, it's whether it be about swallowing your pride or whether it be just taking the initiative, if you're in need of help, reach out to your family group leader, reach out to the deacons, reach out so that we can help because we desire to love you. Why? We're new creations. And what's the biggest practical when it comes to being new creations in Christ? It's really embracing all the things that come with being a disciple of Jesus. See, as new creations, we become disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, because we're new creations in Christ. And I want us to write down this definition. If you don't have it memorized, write it down. A disciple of Jesus is someone who is changed, who follows Jesus as Lord, who is changed by him and is devoted to his mission, Christ's mission. So let me say that again. A disciple of Jesus is one who follows Jesus as Lord, is changed by him and is devoted to his mission. That is the definition of a disciple of Jesus. As a church, there are four pillars that support this uh, way of life. And number one, it's, it is lordship. Jesus is the determiner of our steps. He is Lord. We obey his word. We exhibit our love for him by obedience to his word. And number two is we're devoted to his mission because we are devoted to our oikos. Oikos means household in Greek. And basically it's a belief that there are eight to 15 people in our lives that God has placed in our lives and he has placed us in their lives to help them to know Christ, to influence them to Christ. And number three, we believe in repentance or metanoia in the Greek, meaning mind change, that we constantly are growing and learning and our mind is changing to become more and more like Christ in our thinking and in our actions. And lastly, it is discipleship. It is following Jesus. It is laying down our lives. It's living sacrificially. It's carrying our cross. It's obedience to him and loving him above and putting, putting his kingdom and his righteousness above everything. I mean, you take the L and from lordship and the O from oikos and the R from repentance and the D from discipleship, you get Lord. And we're going to be talking uh, in the first part of the year a lot about that. Why? Because I believe that we need to make sure that we are living out our new created lives in Christ. And number three, we expect the eternal to come. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 13 through 18. There's an intense passage of scripture that really encapsulates this. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. He says, it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. See, Paul had gone through many trials preaching and teaching about Jesus. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We are those who expect the eternal to come. There's another passage where Paul says, if in this life we only have hope, then Christians 
of all people, Christians, those that follow Christ, are to be pitied above everyone else. Because one of the saddest things that someone can believe is to believe that this life is all there is. Have you looked at this life? Have it just in America, but probably even worse in other countries? And if that's your only hope, if that's what you're hanging everything on, that's just flat discouraging. But as disciples of Jesus, why do we rejoice? Why do we celebrate? Why do we have, why do we have joy? Because we know that there is more to come. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we, what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Do you live with eternity in view? You know, we talked about the rat race. And the rat race doesn't allow us to raise our eyes above the rim of flesh. And discouragement sets in, disheartening the, the Christian because they can't see what awaits them. And if we can raise our eyes to see the eternal, then we begin to understand all this stuff around us. It's light and momentary trouble. And God has something amazing for us. And if we see that we want others to have it as well. What's a practical? It's just that, to live with eternity in view. We can't lose sight of why we're doing what we're doing. It's to be with Jesus. Oh, Delano, I thought it was to get to heaven. Well, that might be your goal. My goal is to be with Jesus. You see, the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus needs to be the object of our affection. Jesus needs to be our focus, not what he provides. And that's why I say when we look at the eternal, it's not just eternal life. We got to finish a sentence. It's eternal life with Jesus. He is our love. He is our motivation. He is our faith. You see, the things around us, guys, it's shifting sand. They change from minute to minute, hour to hour. You, you turn on the news one minute, and 10 minutes later, there's another breaking story because something else has changed. We serve an unchanging God. And we have to understand that 2020 and 2021 uh, doesn't look much different, but we are new creations. And the key to a great 2021 is not that things change, but that we change, that we live more and more in the newness of life in Christ. See, the world sees things passing away, and then they see nothing past that. And we see eternity. These things aren't there to make us arrogant. I think things are there to make us urgent to get the word out to those around us. You see, the most popular app right now is an app that takes people through the Bible in a year. You don't think people are looking and searching? They are. And I pray that we can be the lights that God calls us to direct people to him. As we conclude part two, my, my challenge to you is this. Nadine and I were able to take an extended time to spend with God, go on personal retreats, go on prayer times, read, journal, pray, do these things because we needed a deep reset in our walk with God to help fulfill our role here in the church. 
Have you done anything like that? I want to give the challenge if you have not done this already. And even if you have, I want to give the challenge in 2021. Take at least two days. And if you can't do two, do one. But at least two days to spend with God. 48 hours. You block, you, you disconnect, you, you block out time. And you, if you need to go somewhere to the mountains or, or, or the hills or the forest or somewhere, Go spend time with God. Get close to him. Get to know his unchanging nature. Get in touch with the newness of the life that you have in Christ. Get a glimpse of eternity. My belief is it will change your life. Friends and family, thank you so much for tuning in. And let us celebrate 2021 because God is unchanging because we're new creations, and because eternity is to come. God bless. Have a great week. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Were you there? My Lord, were you there? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you My Lord, were you there? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there? It's a time for us to commune with God, to connect with God and Jesus.
It's a time where my wife, Donna, and I break a water cracker. It's our version of unleavened bread or bread without yeast. We also have a cup of grape juice, a small cup. It's our version of the fruit of the vine. Some of you may wonder why we have communion every week as a church. It's because we're following the disciples who went before us. This is mentioned in Acts chapter 20, where it says, On the first day of the week, they came together to break bread. They seem to make it a weekly occurrence, getting together and remembering Jesus. I wonder if Jesus' New Year's resolution this year is going to be unity. The verses I'm about to read happened right before Judas was going to lead men to arrest Jesus. Jesus was about to be beaten, nailed to a cross, crucified, and buried. In John chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, Jesus' prayer, it says in the Message Bible, While Jesus was with his disciples, he said, I'm praying not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me because of them and their witness about me. The goal is for all of them to become one heart and mind, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so they may be one heart and mind with us. Then the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. The glory you gave me, I gave them, so they'll be as unified and together as we are, I in them and you in me. Then they'll be mature in this oneness and give the godless world evidence that you've sent me and love them in the same way you've loved me. So what's our responsibility? I think it's a time for us to pray about being unified, to talk about being unified despite our differences. Maybe Jesus's one word New Year's resolution would be peace instead of unity, or maybe it's both. The Message Bible in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 reads, You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That's when you'll discover who you really are and your place in God's family. Again, I wonder what our responsibility is. I think it's about praying to be peacemakers, praying for peace. I think it's time to talk about making peace, about having peace. Let's accept each other's differences. Although we may have to agree to disagree on some issues, let's acknowledge hurt feelings and talk about forgiveness and healing. Now's the time where we go ahead and, and pray. Let's bow our heads. Our Father, our Dad in heaven, you are our rock, our God of hope and protection. Please forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. We need your help to be unified. We need your help to be peacemakers. Please give us love, humility, patience, compassion, and wisdom. Thank you, God, for allowing your son to shed his blood for us and for allowing his body to be broken for us. We send up our love to you, and we need you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
Good morning. I just wanted to make a special announcement concerning concerning Nate's soul. Uh, it is bittersweet. He will be joining the Air Force and he will be leaving for Texas on Tuesday. Uh, Nate, we love you. Um, we know that this is something that you have been working hard towards and congratulations, but we are going to miss you uh, and we will be praying for you. And just if you want to keep in touch with Nate, you can send an email to Nate J Soul S O U L E eight at gmail.com. Again, that's Nate J Soul eight, and it's the number eight at gmail.com. Nate, once again, we wish you Godspeed, and we know that you'll do us proud. Thanks. We love you, man. God bless. Have a great week.